Hey, what's going on guys? It's me, Aiden, from Cartoon Apocalypse, and today I'm here with a review, kind of, of the English dubs of Heroes Day. Now, the reason I'm doing another review is because the English dub came out, and since I can actually understand exactly what they're saying, I can make a more accurate judgment on everything that this episode has to offer. Now, if you have not seen my previous reviews of Catalyst and Mayura, then I would recommend going to watch that because that's more of a general thing, while in this video I'm going to be going through specific parts that I just wanted to clarify that may be different, or mostly just the more important parts throughout these episodes that I wanted to go through and talk about. One quick announcement before we get into this video, we hit 20,000 subs and as a result I'm doing a giveaway. So in the description of this video there will be a link to a video to enter the giveaway. All you have to do is pretty much just type any comment that you want down in the comment section of that video that's linked in this description. The video that you're commenting on is just a one year celebration video that I did. So as long as you comment on that you will be entered into the giveaway and I'm going to be giving away a $20 gift card to five people so five people will be getting a $20 gift card so be sure to go enter that giveaway and you can watch that video for more info on the giveaway stuff but with that out of the way let's go ahead and talk about just in chronological order of both episodes just the more important parts or things that may have been different from when we watched the sub versus the dub because obviously the translations can be a bit different so the first thing that I wanted to point out is that Catalyst's ability is actually to boost powers. Now in my original Catalyst analysis, I said that her ability was pretty much Hawk Moths. It was to give powers to other people. But it was actually to boost powers, and we learned that from this new dub. So pretty much what she did is gave Hawk Moth the ability to create as many Akumas as he wanted. So Catalyst boosted Hawk Moth's power. So that's pretty much how that all worked. I had it a little bit wrong, but it was really close on the assumption side. So, I mean, it's not too big of a difference, but there is that small little difference there. Skipping ahead a little bit, Alia actually knew that Nino was Carapace. Now, I don't know if you watched this video that I made asking if Alia knew that Nino was Carapace, but that video was half talking about if I thought that she knew in half of a rant on if she did know. And in that video, I believe I said that I believe that she did know, but I was mad that she did know because it just kind of broke everything in the show. Now, you can go watch that video if you want to, but pretty much the reason why I was mad that Alia knew that Nina was Carapace was because how come nobody else can tell that anyone else is the heroes, if that makes any sense? How can Alia not tell that Marinette is Ladybug? Same with Adrian and Cat Noir. And there have been many instances where Alia has been like, oh, well, doesn't he look like Cat Noir? Or she's been looking for Ladybug, and it's so obvious, too. So the reason why I was mad about that is because it just goes against the whole order. The law of Miraculous, in my opinion, is that people just are, are oblivious to people's identities. But when you introduce Alia being able to find out that Nina was Carapace, that just kind of throws everything out of whack because everybody should be able to piece together who everyone is, just either based on looks or personality or just the way that they sound and how like Marinette and Adrian are always gone and late and etc. And just, it doesn't make sense, and I was a little bit mad about that. But there's nothing we can really do about it, and uh, yeah, that, that, that's all about that. Now I just want to mention again that Frozer was taken out too easily. If you saw, like, he just popped up and then he disappeared pretty much, and it would have been so interesting to see that Frozen Ice Kingdom again play a bigger role but it didn't, and I know they were pressed for time, but still, I would have liked to see him put up a little bit of a fight versus just getting taken out after the first 10 seconds of him being in the episode. I just don't like how things like this can be rushed. I feel like it could have been incorporated a little bit better, but it doesn't matter too much because that wasn't really the main point of the episode. But really, all the villains in this episode were taken out really easily. Now, I don't know if that's because Scarlet Hawk Moths, like, that's his downside. Like, yeah, he can create multiple villains, but those villains aren't as powerful. I don't exactly know if that's how it works, but that's the best explanation that I can give for how everyone was taken out so easily. But, I mean, again, it, it just really doesn't matter because we all knew that he wasn't going to win in the end. 
but uh, whatever. So now we're getting onto the more interesting stuff, the more plot related stuff. At the very end of Mayura, Hawkmoth says, all right kids, watch what a man who has nothing to lose can do. And this was very interesting. This was when Hawkmoth was just, he was out of his scarlet form and he was like fighting Ladybug and Cat Noir. But this was just showing that Hawkmoth was really just do or die at that point. He had lost all of his support, like Catalyst was gone. So he pretty much just thought, if I don't win, then I lose. And that was the mindset that he was in. So he was like, all right, well, I'm going to do everything in my power to survive and fight. So he's just pretty much saying that he's got nothing to lose. So he's going to try to fight and do his very best because... If he loses, then he loses. He, there's no winning if he loses. So, because he didn't expect Mayura to come in and save him. But, I mean, that's just interesting to learn that he was really at the very edge of losing there. Now, another part in that little fighting sequence is he said that he can stay transformed after using his powers. Now, he didn't say this directly, but he said that Ladybug and Cat Noir couldn't. So this makes us assume that he can stay transformed after using his power, which we can see. It's pretty obvious that he can. But this is super interesting because we may see in the future Ladybug and Cat Noir being able to not have to transform back. At, or at least within like a 5 minute time frame. Maybe it's boosted to like 10 or 20 minutes just as an example. But it's likely that we will see their powers evolve over time. And it'll be interesting to see how he was able to do this. Whether it was something that he read out of the book and he was able to decipher and learn how to do it. Or it's just something that comes over time. We don't exactly know. Now there's this one part in this episode that really kind of annoys me. Well, I mean, there's there's a lot of things in this episode that annoys me. But this one thing is Ladybug could have probably won. Now, the circumstances may have been a little bit different, but... I, I still feel like that she could have won. Remember when she lassoed around the Eiffel Tower trapping Hawkmoth and all the other heroes in it? Why didn't she just lasso Hawkmoth? Hawkmoth had just been pinned to the ground, or not really pinned to the ground. He was hit to the ground by Carapace's shield. And while he was getting up, while he was not able to do anything because he had just been hit, Ladybug could have just lassoed around him, but instead she lassoed around the whole Eiffel Tower. Now, in my opinion, I feel like she should have lassoed around him. Now, maybe she just wasn't thinking straight, or maybe he was actually behind something. Uh, no, he wasn't behind anything. I'm just trying to give Ladybug some credit here. But it, I just feel like this could have ended a lot sooner and just would have been a, lot, a little bit better if she had lassoed around him, and that just would have resulted in just a whole better episode I think and then we could have seen Myra make a bigger appearance because all the heroes would have been surrounding him about to take off his miraculous you know all this good stuff and then Myra shows up and just ruins everything I feel like that would have made the episode a lot better but that's just my opinion but the episode was just fine the way it was I guess that was just a quick little thing that I wanted to point out now you guys may have been noticing that instead of saying Myra I've been saying Myra and that's because that's the pronunciation that was used in the show, Myura. Now I was saying Myra because we didn't really have a good way to know how it was pronounced, but now we know it's Myura, so that's how I will be pronouncing it from now on, hopefully. Now a lot of you may be wondering what Myura's powers actually are. And from this episode, I have come to the early conclusion that Myura takes emotions and creates something out of them. Hawkmoth's ability is to create superheroes or villains. It doesn't really actually tie anything into emotions. He just uses emotions to take control of his victims a little bit better. So don't get Hawkmoth and Myura confused with both being emotion-based. They're not. Myura is the only emotion-based miraculous that we know of at this point in time and that does the exact same thing. Now they're very similar because they're both affecting people but one is affecting someone personally and actually changing their physical form and something like that, while Myura is actually just taking their emotion and creating like an entity out of that emotion. So we can see in the episode Myura when Myura actually attacks or just uses her power on Hawkmoth, she creates this sort of Hawkmoth. If you Google Hawkmoth without like miraculous at the end, just Hawkmoth, then you'll see something that looks similar to what we see in the show. But that was created out of his emotion, his despair. It was a guardian to him 
created from his despair. So that's kind of what her power is, is to create something out of nothing. And that's why her power is so much better because she doesn't need the person. She doesn't need to rely on the person itself. She just needs to rely on the entity that's created from that person, which could be a lot stronger than that person could be. So I hope that clears up things between the differences of Myura and Hawk Moth, and just kind of explaining what Myura's powers really are, because there was some confusion after the sub came out, because we really didn't know. Now, after Myura's attack, or strike, or whatever you want to call it, after that happened and Hawk Moth escaped, Ladybug and Cat Noir were able to piece together that Hawk Moth had help from the other Lost Miraculous. They instantly knew this. I don't even know how Cat Noir knew this, but Ladybug knew that it was the other Miraculous from Master Fu. Now, there were a lot of plot holes in this episode, things that just didn't exactly make sense. I could make a whole other video on it, but I don't exactly know how Adrian knew all of this stuff. Now, maybe Master Fu talked to him about it when they met during the episode Siren, but honestly, I don't think they had enough time to explain, oh yes, they're missing another Miraculous besides just Hawk Moth. I don't exactly know when they went about explaining this, but we can assume that they did explain it somehow, and that Cat Noir knows that it's a Peacock Miraculous, and he knows pretty much as much as Ladybug does at this point in time, which doesn't exactly make too much sense, saying that Ladybug has a deeper connection with Master Fu than Adrian does. Now, one thing that I said in my Myura original analysis is that the Peacock Miraculous is damaged, and that's a lot of things that people weren't able to pick up on because it was a sub and a lot of the subs didn't have that. But that was actually confirmed in this newest dub, because the Miraculous truly is damaged, and it's very dangerous, as illustrated from Gabriel. Gabriel says that it's very dangerous, and I made a video talking about how I believed that this is how Emily Agress died, and I still stand by that theory. This makes it all the more plausible to having the damaged part be confirmed. So if you're interested in learning more about that theory, and this may explain how Hawk Moth has the ability to stay transformed after using his power because he's just had pure experience, I'd recommend going to watch that video because that video has some good ideas in it about just Emily Agress and Hawk Moth and them, their early careers and things like that. So now we're really at the very end here, and just, you know, everyone's favorite part, you know, the Adrianette stuff. So Adrian is super kind in this episode. It was pretty much the same thing that we learned from the sub, but just a more detailed version because we can understand it. But I just want to reiterate that Adrian is super kind in this episode, and man, that just makes Marinette love him all the more, and it's really interesting to see that. And then, I thought I'd mention it again, but Marinette ends up kissing him, and we have that dub in English now, so yay, everyone's happy. So that's really going to be it for this episode's analysis. I just kind of wanted to go through the big points there that may have changed or that were kind of important to the plot, and just re-put them with more confidence because we've actually heard them word for word in this episode. But without any further ado, that's going to be it for me, and I'll talk to you guys later. Goodbye. Taken. Taken as well. <laughs>